The Smale Horseshoe Map was introduced in 1967 by American mathematician Stephen Smale and provides a motivating example of how chaotic dynamics can arise in two-dimensional maps. Like the case of the Baker map from the previous video, the Smale Horseshoe is a two-dimensional mapping from a region in the plane to another region that can be studied geometrically and without specifying the exact analytical details of the map. It was used by Smale in order to develop symbolic dynamics, which you have seen applied to our one-dimensional example. In this video, I'll explain to you the basic idea of the map and the connections to some of the ideas we have learned in the course. Many of the images from this video are taken from the article from Cambridge's Plus magazine linked in the description. For a more published examination, you can also refer to Chapter 4 of Edward Ott's Chaos in Dynamical Systems book. To begin, we shall consider a two-dimensional map, say xn plus 1 equal to f of xn, where here x is a point in R2, and this map will be defined by the following geometrical process. You begin with a square s and the two ends v. Let's call the three pieces together d. You compress this shape horizontally and stretch it vertically, and then you bend it around until it becomes a horseshoe and place it back into the region d. This is one iteration of the map, so every point, say xn, in the original d region has been mapped to a point in yellow. Notice that there are regions, here shown in white, where there is no pre-image. Now we iterate the map and essentially our interest is in asking what happens to the original region d after two iterations of the map, or f squared. Again, we take this shape, horizontally compress, vertically stretch, fold it around, and place it back into the region D. What we have then is the region shown in red. So in summary, we began with the white region. We bent and transformed this white region into the yellow horseshoe with four strands in the F map. And then in the F squared map, the yellow horseshoe is bent once again into a red horseshoe that has eight strands. Now, the hard part is trying to figure out what happens to the individual points, and I'd like us to try to derive the invariant set lambda that is contained within the square. In other words, I'd like us to figure out what points x in the square s are such that they always remain in s for all time on the effects of the map. These are the most interesting points, and if this map is chaotic, as we have noted, then there must be something very peculiar about these points, in the sense that they must be moving in a very unpredictable way. Let's let x0 be in the square s. Then x1, which is equal to f of x0, may not necessarily lie in the square, correct? In particular, if x0 is in the capped ends, or very near to the capped ends, then we know that x1 will lie in the lower capped end. Similarly, if x0 is somewhere in the vertical center of the square, then it would be mapped to the upper capped end, and hence it lies outside the square. Therefore, in order for x1 to lie within the square, then x0 must lie somewhere in these two horizontal strips, which we call h0 and h1, and shown in green. It is these two horizontal strips which are mapped to the two yellow vertical strips, which we call V0 and V1. Imagine now taking the point X1, which lies within these two yellow vertical strips, and hitting it with the map again. Where must X1 lie in order for X2 to lie within the square? Or equivalently, where must X0 be so that F squared of X0 lies in S. So again, the map compresses things horizontally, stretches things vertically, folds everything into a horseshoe, and we place everything back into the original region D. The middle vertical section and the ends of the two vertical strips near the cap will then lie outside the square. So, in order to guarantee that the point x0 is mapped to a point x2 in the square after two iterations of f, you must ensure that x0 lies within the intersection of the green and yellow regions. 
Specifically, if I call the two horizontal strips H0 and H1 and the two vertical strips V0 and V1, then I need X0 in H0 union H1 intersected with V0 union V1. I now have four boxes to consider, and again, I must ask myself where X0 must be in each of these four boxes so that after the third iteration of the map, or F cubed of X3, the point lies within the square. I would then conclude that X0 must in fact be within one of 16 possible square regions, and this is what is illustrated on page 111 of Ott's book. Thus, lambda can be written as the infinite intersection of a set of non-empty, closed, nested sets. It forms a cantor set and is itself non-empty. Now I want to make the connection with chaos and symbolic dynamics. What we can do is begin from a point x in the square and simply associate with each point a symbol sequence. This symbol sequence will be a binary sequence for which each entry is either 0 or a 1, indicating whether the corresponding iterate of the map lies in the horizontal strip H0 or the horizontal strip H1. For example, consider the sequence that has zeros up to a decimal point, a single zero, a single one, and then zeros henceforth. This sequence means that x0 lies in h0, x1 lies in h1, and every subsequent forward iterate of the map lies in the h0 strip. The entries before the decimal place indicates where the pre-images lie, or the backwards orbit. So in this case, every subsequent pre-image lies in the H0 strip. I should note that in our course, we mainly studied semi-infinite sequences, so we only considered the forward orbit of the map, but I'll consider the bi-infinite sequence so that it aligns with the plus magazine reference. The key then is that the dynamics of this two-dimensional map can be studied by simply examining the structure of the sequences. Each point in the invariant set is associated with a binary symbol sequence. In our course, we have developed the theory of symbolic dynamics, so we know that on the assumption that this association between the shifting of the sequences and the operations of f on points in the plane is a conjugacy, then all the consequences of sequence shifting will have an analogous consequence for the actual dynamics of the horseshoe map. Let me give an example. Take the point x, which is associated with the symbol sequence given in the following. In other words, this is a point in the plane which is always mapped for all future time and all past time into the lower horizontal strip, since all the entries are 1s. Now suppose you were to perturb this point infinitesimally, so you take a point very, very, very close by. This point might have a symbol sequence given by the following a series of 1s, followed by a series of 1s, a 0 in the 7th entry, and then 1s thereafter. So it defers on the 7th entry. By the properties of our construction, we're assured that the distance between x and y is small, both in distance measured in the binary sequence and distance measured in the plane. However, on the 6th entry of the map, f of y is equal to this sequence while f of x is equal to this sequence. The two sequences differ by the most immediate value next to the decimal. In other words, f to the 6 of y is an h0, while f to the 6 of x is an h1. The two images are far apart, despite the fact that x and y were initially extremely close. This can be made more rigorous according to our definition of sensitive dependence on initial conditions. In summary, the map exhibits sensitive dependence on initial conditions. Two points, arbitrarily close together, can be made to separate to be a large distance apart. This is one of the trademark signatures of chaos. Moreover, we know many other consequences of having this powerful association between shifting of symbol sequences and the original map. The point of this example, and the second video on two-dimensional mappings, is to teach you not only about this important historical example of the Smale Horseshoe, but to also show you that many aspects of more complicated dynamical systems and aspects of chaotic dynamics 
can be understood using the theory we have developed throughout the year.